started this speech for many years. Pine trees are a very important resource in this part of Arkansas, and they're very important in Henderson's history and to our alumni. At the end of World War II, Miss Amy Jean Green, who started Heart and Key in 1946, felt the school needed some pepping up and made a talk to the incoming freshmen to tell them the traditions of the school. At first it was jokingly called the Pine Tree Speech, and then became affectionately called that. It's still called that today, and if those pine trees on campus could talk, they'd tell you plenty about the traditions of a school named Henderson that has been on this same spot, although by various names, for over 124 years. They can tell how belonging and caring and friendships, it's all a part of the ready spirit. Tonight it's my privilege to tell you the stories that have existed through the years, the same ones that our alumni all around the world have heard the stories of a school with a heart. You're starting the 124th session of school at Henderson this year. Those first students started on September the 3rd, 1890. The Methodist in Arkadelphia had bought a cotton field with a grand notion of erecting a college to serve the men and women of Arkansas. They called it Arkadelphia Methodist College. Dr. John McLaughlin, the Methodist minister, is considered the founder and was the first board chairman. The Baptists had already started a school across the ravine. <laughs> Suppose you were a freshman in 1890. You might have come by a wagon. First three students came from Amity in a wagon that hot September day. Or you might have come by train, horse and buggy, or maybe on a steamboat. There was no electricity or any telephones that first year. You can bet they had a lot less to move in than you did. You would have passed the Bartman Place at the end of Henderson Street, and if you were here a few years later, you would have seen Captain Henderson's place on the corner. He was George Christopher Henderson, the one for whom Henderson was named after he gave financial aid to keep the school going. It didn't look quite like that when he was living there. As we turn through the pages of old annuals, which have been around since 1906, by the way, I'll tell you a little bit about how it was. The building was not completed that first fall. It was to be a four-story Victorian structure that would cost $30,000. In a few years, when it was completed, it housed all the offices, the library, the study hall, parlor, women's gym, president's quarters, dining halls, kitchen, and women's dorm. A small lake out in front was for the entertainment of students and faculty or a cry from the grave. It was located where QE Library is today. Very soon, telephone service was initiated, electricity available. If a boyfriend called, he had to talk to the president or the president's wife. He would have worn a uniform. The men wore military uniforms. Our tradition with the military has been a long and proud one. The ROTC program was on campus over 50 years and produced several generals. It's back now in connection with Warshaw after having been gone for several years. The women wore long gray dresses with long sleeve blouses. A far cry from today. <laughs> women were allowed two dates per week if they could get them. One on Saturday night when they would sit in the parlor and one on Sunday afternoon when they would sit on the front lawn where they would be seen by everyone. If a boyfriend wrote a letter, it would have to be addressed to the president's wife who would read it first and then pass it on to the girl if it was proper. Dr. George Childs Jones was the first president. Men and women 
had separate walks and separate dining halls where faculty members presided at each table. There have been a variety of organizations on campus through the years, and many fields of study have been added since those first days. As I said, the first name of the school was not Henderson, but Arkadelphia Methodist College until 1904. From 1904 to 1919, Henderson College, then Henderson Brown, adding the name of Charles Henderson's business associate, who also gave money to the school. My grandmother graduated from Henderson College in 1906. Now, if you give money now, they're not going to change the name of the school. <clears throat> if you've been a student, in 1914, on a cold February morning, you might have heard the bell toll and gunshots fired to summon help because of a fire. You might have been in one of the salvage lines formed by students and friends that saved the entire library of over 3,000 volumes, a dozen pianos, and the athletic trophies. After the fire, you might have joined other students in a little grove of pine trees to try to decide what you would do then. The storytellers say that the ready spirit was born that cold February morning when that group of students decided they wouldn't go home. They loved and cared for each other and for their school. They promised each other that if they could find a place to live and to meet, they would stay, that Henderson would not cease to be. What then is the ready spirit? A sense of belonging, a, love, a sense of loyalty and responsibility, pride in the school and love for each other. It'll cure whatever ails you from homesickness to hives. There was a story when I was a student that if a boy proposed to a girl on bench 13, she couldn't refuse. But for many years, the benches weren't numbered, so you weren't sure which one was 13. Today, you'll find bench 13 outside of the Rental Science Center. It was dedicated to Miss Amy Jean Green, the founder of Heart and Key. We've heard many alums tell how they became engaged on bench 13. In 1929, the school was taken over by the state and became Henderson State Teachers College. My mother graduated from the school with this name in 1931 and had the same name when I graduated in 1962. It later became Henderson State College and finally Henderson State University as it was when my daughter graduated. Let's take an imaginary stroll around the campus while I point out a few things. In 1903, the campus received a number of improvements, among them a lovely wrought iron fence along the front. You can see this fence today. It's the oldest intact landmark from the days of Arkadelphia Methodist College. Those brick pillars at the front entrance were a gift from the class of 1920. The bell you see mounted on the front campus was the bell used to signal the change of classes. It rang in 1914 to summon help when the main building was engulfed in flames. Although it no longer has a clapper, it said that it sometimes mysteriously told during homecoming week to signal a forthcoming ready football victory. On either side of the bell, you can see the steps from the original building which were saved after the fire. This pine grove between Arkansas Hall and the Reynolds Science Center was formed from debris which was piled there after the fire of 1914. It isn't quite as large as it used to be because these two buildings have grown. But <coughs> the few trees remaining represent that ready spirit. The giant oak trees on the front lawn were planted in 1896. Each of the elected college beauties planted one and named it for her favorite bow. Many originals have been lost, 
and more have planted to keep the front lawn beautiful. You'll notice small stands of holly trees around the campus, particularly the little grove with near the bell on the front lawn. Each holly was planted in a ceremony <clears throat> and represents a memorial for Reddy who lost his life in war. The first were planted after World War I and others were planted for the following in World War II. Outside Arkansas Hall here is a plaque in uh, honor of those alumni lost in Vietnam and then there's a tribute over in the Garrison Center for those from Vietnam. The Newberry House was built by Farrah Newberry, who was president of the International Woodman of the World. The Newberries called it home place. And from 1969, except for a few years, it has served as the president's home for Henderson. The Bartman House was built in 1860. It's on the Register of Historic Places. Several years back, it was renovated and serves as the alumni house with office space for alumni and development. The Captain Charles Christopher Henderson House is a show place for Arkadelphia. It too is on the historic register and is now a bed and breakfast owned by Henderson. I'm especially proud of the way it looks because it was owned by my family for 60 years before my sister and I sold it to Henderson in 1979. I'm constantly hearing from townspeople and alumni and even people I don't even know about what a wonderful job Henderson has done with the house. The Centurion was a gift from the student government and the student body during Henderson's centennial in 1990. Now, Dr. John Hall, our resident historian, tells us that Reddy's is actually from the red jackets that the football team wore. They just simply moved that red jackets, shortened it to Reddy's, and we've been Reddy's ever since. Some of the oldest traditions involve homecoming and the Battle of the Ravine which is our game against Washita, that school I mentioned <coughs> a while ago. Uh, <laughs> this year, the Battle of the Ravine will be played on November the 15th at Carpenter Haygood Stadium. When I was a child, this big football game was played on Thanksgiving Day, it was homecoming for both schools, and was the biggest day of the year with a giant parade through town. For a period of years, the two schools took turns having the battle as homecoming. There was also a period of years when the game was not played. The rivalry had gotten a little too intense, and the presidents called it off for a while. The first football game against Washington was 1895. Now, one of the oldest legends involving homecoming is the story of the Lady in Black or Black Lady, as she became to be known. Miss Mary Sue Mooney used to relate this story to freshman girls as far back as 1912, and it goes like this. Once upon a time, a beautiful Henderson girl fell in love with a washtaw man. Can you imagine that? And he jilted her. Can you imagine that? It was said that the his heart was stolen by an unknown freshman girl at Henderson. Now, freshman women have stolen the loves of up, the upperclassmen since time immemorial, and it's a sad thing, unless you're a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> the heartbroken, jilted lover dressed herself in the black of mourning, and jumped to her death from the bluff overlooking the Washtenaw River the night before homecoming. As the story goes, this poor, broken soul returns every year during homecoming week to search the freshman girl's dorm to find that girl that stole her love. But don't be afraid. 
afraid just because you hear chains rattling slowly and see a candle flickering faintly and glimpse a shadowy figure dressed in black roaming your dorm. If you did not steal this poor soul's love, you have nothing to fear. The cold, clammy hand simply looks. Perhaps she'll never find. School songs form the last of the pine tree story. A pet club to promote the ready spirit was formed by students in 1921. They introduced a new fight song which undoubtedly changed the course of history. That old ready spirit was the song sung to the tune of that old time religion. The words were composed by the preacher of the local Methodist church, but the tune generated controversy. President Workman was afraid he would offend some of the college's guests for the game with Washita. He persuaded the cheerleaders not to use it that year, but it was too good to be kept down. And the cheerleaders introduced it again the next year. And we hear it today. When the ready band plays the ready hymn, it's impossible to contain the ready spirit within you. Jim Workman. It's one of the last things he did for Henderson before leaving it when it became a state school. It was a time of great change. He didn't feel that he as an ordained minister should serve as president of a state institution. The music was written by Dr. Frederick Harwood of the music faculty. It's an original work. You need to know the meaning of the words for the song to be real for you. Breathe. Stalwart pine trees, memories of living shadows, of course, stands for the love and loyalty of those Henderson students who vowed in 1914 to stay on in spite of trouble. Whisper, acorn bearers, refers to the great oaks on the front lawn which were planted by college beauties. 
from thy living fountains, the fountain that flows entrance to the school, and the fountains of love that flow in the hearts of readies. Beauty and friendship, eternal as the holly, from the holly trees planted to those who lost their lives in war. Into all thy children, alma mater, Henderson. Some things change, some things never change. The beauty of an oak tree, the love of friends. May the ready spirit be with you. Woo!